Hey y'all, this is uh, Patriot Prepper, and I uh, just want to talk a little bit about a, my bug out yacht, okay? In reality, I'm not in a very good mood, because I did not come here to have fun today. I actually came here because one of our, uh, I've got a diesel, two Detroit diesel engines, and uh, one of them's not firing up. And uh, I had, you know, occasionally you always get problems with boats, and uh, uh, so I came here to try to fix it. Um, this happened about six, seven years ago, same situation. I think it's a, a safety switch on the transmission so it doesn't start when it engages, so it totally shuts down that, uh, that engine. Anyway, um, uh, so that's the scenario. Uh, um, so I want to talk a little bit about bugging out on a yacht, you know, because I hear every once in a while people talk about going to an island. I've lived on three different islands, currently have one residence. I have two Florida residents, one is on a, an island. And uh, I've actually lived on this boat two, three months at a time. Okay, she's about uh, over 45 feet. Um, get this thing out of the way here. And uh, just a nice, uh, comfortable boat for having a good time. It's not a trawler. Um, it's got about 600 nautical mile range, you know, give or take, depending on currents and things to that nature, just like flying an airplane. Back here, okay, it's a very hot day. I came here to work on this boat, and I wouldn't normally, I don't even, you know, wouldn't even brought my uh, camera, but I thought I'd uh, uh, just do this. I'm waiting to get parts. It's kind of a mess up situation. Okay, well, let me show you, actually, let me show you a little bit of the marina. You notice down this direction, there's a lot of sailboats. And if you're gonna bug out by boat, sailboat is probably a better option than a smoker. These are diesels. I got two twin Detroit diesels, or about 480 horsepower each. Pretty powerful, uh, pretty darn powerful diesel. A lot of power, but it's a huge boat for that, even for a thousand, almost a thousand horsepower. Combined horsepower is still a pretty big boat to move. So you're talking maybe 20 some mile cruise speed. All right, this is our raft deck or you know and uh sorry it's a little messy i didn't know i was going to be doing this today but uh thought i'd guys show you guys around a little bit here this is, man we've had big parties i think i have some photos i'm gonna probably if i can insert them but this thing will hold i mean we've had about 15 people believe it or not in the back here it's one of the reasons we like this boat is that it's we can have people over and have parties and not interfere with the uh um, you know, just messing up our cabin and stuff like that. So we, we've taken a lot of people here and had some really cool times. You know, I was always the first guy to go to sleep, but we had people sleeping over all night parties. I'm not that big into that. I'm like a lightweight. Um, anyway. It's a little hot up here. I've got all the bimneys. Uh, there's a new roof. I don't think you can really see it. Uh, Bimney cover. Um, you can see how good the plastic is. It's brand new because it got messed up. In one of Oops. Boat's kind of rocking. Something you got to get used to when you're on a boat. Got their two captain chairs. I'll, I'll get this to you. All right, going back down here. Oops. Man, it's hard to walk holding this camera. And uh, kind of a messy. A little on the messy side. Okay, here's uh, to the main salon and uh, got to close because we're on, we're on shore power right now. We got generators, obviously. Uh, you know, this is a. Uh, so here's the main salon, and this boat will comfortably sleep at least eight people. You know, I'll show you the cabins, but uh, got a lot of ca cabinets here. TV, uh, this, this couch sofa folds down, it'll fold down to, uh, and sleep, sleep two people. Um, you got to think of this thing as, as like a, um, a trailer, you know, a big trailer, like, a, you know, it's 40 some feet, 45 feet interior, close to 45 feet. It's over 45 feet, so the interior is 45 feet. So think of it as a camping trailer. And here's the, you gotta go down the stairs, but here's the uh, uh, t 
table and that folds down just like a camping trailer folds down into uh, can sleep two people here's the galley um, you know it's got microwave stove you know sink it's a little dehumidifier We've got a fan going up there we got a nice little refrigerator you notice on boats a lot of stuff like this so when you're you know to keep things from flying open um, same with cabinets you know they're all there's all these safety latches and um, anyway so you know believe me I love this boat um, you know I'll talk about a little bit about uh, here's the uh, bow there's a cabin in here the lighting's a little a little dim here got a skylight that's where that lights coming up um, this is a like a, a full-size bed you know there's a porthole okay you got storage closet on this side probably can't see it and then you got a full-size bath in here um, that's actually a shower you got a sink and uh, you know toilet um, I put that's just a the carpet's actually in good shape and that's why the towels on there to keep it in good shape so here's going back to uh, back the other direction now here's the uh, main main cabin the master cabin it's down this way um, okay here's the master cabin it's got uh, stuff all over cabinets and closets and here's the uh, master bed and uh, if you go this way you got TV this, this boat has a lot of nice wood on it and then there's the uh, master bath it's really a nice day um, too bad I couldn't get the darn motor started so far um, there's a little walk walkway along the side of the boat you know if you wanted to this boat's not designed for fishing but you could fish we fished from it before and actually I got one of a fishing shirt on but you can come out here on the deck video camera man spotlight horn I've got a crane to unload like an inflatable inflatable raft in case you need to get to shore whoops almost slipped went over the rail these <laughs> gosh every time I use a stupid video camera I have a tendency to not pay attention okay I'm gonna show you what I'm doing today here's the uh, here's the engine room oh boy here try to lift this up with one hand hold on a second here okay I just had to lift that up there's the uh, here's the engine room I've got a light down here but I'm gonna use a use a flashlight It's a little tight in here, but you can, I don't know if you can see the diesel here. This is the uh, port diesel, the other side is the starboard diesel. And back here is what I'm working on. There's a little freaking switch back there. Uh, I don't know if, you could, if I could zoom in on it, you can see it back there. Well, I changed that switch about six, seven, eight years ago. I can't remember how long, and it was fine. But the problem here is that that switch isn't right here. It's actually way back in there, facing opposite. There's two little nuts that I got to try to. So I got to try to lay across this somehow. 
you know, I got to put my legs here, and my body across there, and then reach over that stuff to try to somehow uh, undo a couple nuts and a couple screws. Okay, um, this little uh, micro switch, it's uh, maybe a Honeywell, and uh, you see right here is where the the linkage to the transmission. This is a transmission uh, safety switch. So when it's in gear, the engine will not start. Now, I fixed one of these about six, seven years ago, and this is what the problem was. Hoping that's what the problem is now. Um, I want to say if you guys want me to fix your boat, don't call me. Anyway, um, here's the contact. I'm, uh, I tested it with a meter. There's the meter. And uh, I'm using an emery board to uh, get the contact. You see how shiny it was? You can see where it's part corroded. The jumpers with alligator clips. I'm going to run this to bypass the switch just to see if it is a switch before I put the switch back on because it's in a really awkward position. Something I'm not looking forward to even putting in. I do not want to put a switch in if uh, the darn thing does not work. So that's what we're doing now. I'm going to clean up these uh, contacts because the switch actually appears to be working it just seems like a bad contacts are very corroded uh, here this one you can see how nice and shiny we got that so it could just been a corrosion one little piece like that stops a whole million dollar boat unbelievable huh all right so hopefully I can get this thing going okay I'm back in the engine room this time I'm using a uh, trouble light. I didn't want to use it before and I used a flashlight because I did not want to heat this engine room up because the air condition doesn't work down here and gets a little hot. I was sweating like a dog. Um, took me a while to figure out where this switch was because it's on the opposite side of the other engine. Um, I removed the, uh, the air filter cover. What I got to do is crawl got to crawl way back lay on top of this stuff and it kills my ribs my legs on here it's like a nightmare and I got to work upside down backwards I'm gonna have to put this video camera down now and I'm gonna try to jump run a jumper across there to see uh, if I bypass the switch before I put the switch in to see if that is the problem okay well it looks like she started Okay, um, you know, there's people who think they could bug out on boats. I just want to tell you my reality, my perspective is that water, the sea, is not exactly a friendly place. And the expertise and knowledge that you have to have uh, to survive long term, maybe for the rest of your life on a boat, wow, man, it's like to me about 10 times more difficult than on land. And, uh, and this kind of boat isn't really equipped for it. I mean, I'm just talking, the reason I made this is to highlight the fact that if one thing goes wrong in the water, you could be really totally screwed. Totally, because you're dependent on this as your life raft, you know? And uh, a sailboat, you have a better chance, but things go wrong on sailboats too. Now, as far as an island, uh, it's possible. You know, um, I've got two friends. One guy, he's got like a 60, almost 80, between 60 and 80 million dollar piece of property in the Bahamas. Another girl I know has a property that could be worth over a hundred million dollars. You know, she doesn't own it outright. She's put about uh, three, th three million of her own money into it. And I helped her with this project. I helped them both with this project. They're not 
they're more friends and business partners. And uh, there's another person that put about three or four million into it, and then they're trying to attract like about 30 million seed money, and maybe another 50 million to develop it. But that's not for prepping, man. That's for commercial use, which they they would have done fine, but the recession came and and really messed things up a bit. But I've lived on three islands. Um, an island could be devastating. Most islands you can't sus necessarily sustain life on them. And the ones that you can, there's already sometimes people there. So just think of that. But uh, you know, what I want to say is that uh, bugging out by sea is not easy. Just like the reason I'm here today, to fix something. One thing goes wrong, you're, you're in big trouble. So, you know, this boat was suited for one purpose, for enjoyment. You know, I enjoy life. I don't want to be, you know, worried about the end of the world or worried about disasters. I mean, man, I enjoy my life. I do things that are fun. And I'm also prepped, prepped up. I'm, I'm prepared. Things collapse, I'm prepared, I'm ready. But the interim, I'm going to enjoy life. Now, um, that's pretty much what I want to say about bugging out. Just don't know how real practical it is as a bug out yacht. Bugging out by boat, sailboat, whatever you have, is a very intimidating factor if one thing goes totally wrong, harder to survive. I mean, the sea is not a friendly place. If something happens to that boat, you're really screwed. You know, and uh, also consider the possibility of pirates. Yeah, some people say the two happiest days in a boater's life is the day he buys the boat and the day he sells it. <laughs> well, that's not really totally 100% true, but, uh, you know, I think that's how a lot of people face everything in life. You know, they're always anticipating, hoping to get something. Then when they get it, they don't always appreciate what they have. And, and I think that same thing could be said of marriages, same thing could be said of just about everything in life. Some people, you always want something. You always try to reach for something you don't have or think that if you had something you don't have that your life will get better. And then when you get it, it's like you almost don't care about it. So a lot of people got to learn how to enjoy their lives. You got to enjoy what you have now. And even with prepping, man, do the best you can. You know, I, I've worked with preppers that got so much money. And uh, I mean, they got, you know, this, this boat's expensive. You could buy a retreat for the price of this boat. Um, but there's people that have, you know, like 100-foot uh, yachts, 200-foot yachts that are worth 25, 50 million, 100 million dollars. People have unlimited funds. Um, also, like, you know, so the grass is always greener on the other side of the fence. There's always people that have a lot more than you have. But the pr thing is, is to appreciate what you have, be grateful, be thankful, and not covet, and not think that if you had something else that your life would be better. That's not, with that kind of an attitude, you'll never be happy with life. You'll never feel like you're totally prepped or prepared either. You know, I mean, I can show you people, who, well, I can't show you them because they don't want to show their retreat, but I know people that I help establish their retreat and their land and put this up together that have so much stuff, man, it would freak you out. And you'd be like going, boy, I wish I had that. I could survive. But, you know, survival is right up here, too, a big portion of it. Some people who survive on practically nothing out in the middle of nowhere. There are people like that. You know, people always want to say, oh, it's impossible to do this. It's impossible to do that. Impossible to survive out in the wilderness. It's impossible for somebody to stop a shooting like that just happened in Aurora. Oh, there's all people that tell you everything's impossible. Okay? If you want to think things are impossible, go ahead. You're probably right, at least for your own life. And that's probably why you got stuck where you are. But I'm not an impossibility thinker. I'm a possibility thinker. If you're an impossibility thinker, you have no chance of surviving and prepping. You know, some people think it's going to be like Disneyland. It's going to be hell on earth. It's not something you want. But if you don't have the right mindset, the survival mindset, defense mindset, if you don't believe you can do it, you are already doomed. And that's why I think there's doomsday preppers, not because of doomsday, but because there's preppers out there that are already doomed before they even got started because they got something missing up here as far as the attitude, the willingness to survive and prepare and overcome. Okay? I'm an overcomer. I'm a possibility thinker. I don't admit defeat. 
you have to, I'll admit defeat the day my heart stops beating, okay? In the, same, in the same vein, if you want my guns, you're going to have to pry them out of my cold, dead hands. I'm not going to surrender. I'm not going to give up. I've been criticized for that on forums, like, oh yeah, people call me like, oh, who do you think you are, Chuck Norris? And a lot of negativity, man. A lot of negative thinkers. Be positive. Be a positive thinker. Be a positive person. Be a possibility thinker. Believe you're going to do it. Believe you can survive. Put your effort into it. That's what counts, all right? So my opinion on a boat, man, there's people that can survive on a, a yacht. Maybe there's people that can survive on a sailboat. It's just I'm saying, it's a lot harder for most people. You know, I've taken a, a power squadron courses. I almost thought about getting captain's license. And you know, I don't, I don't have any commercial use. I do it for joy. So, you know, I've got a little bit of knowledge, but man, it's not enough. Now, I know my limitations. My, I, my best place to survive is on land, terra firma. And that's where I want to stay, on land. All right, Pedro Pepper, God bless you. Keep on prepping. Pedro Pepper, over and out.